Good day and welcome to my study for yet another sermon, our second uh, in the series of sermons for uh, during the lockdown, peri lockdown period. And uh, uh, let's close our eyes in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that despite everything else around us being upside down and um, uncertain, you are still sure that you are still the same, that you have not changed, and that you still care for us, even in this time. We pray now, Father, that you will bless us as we come together around your word. Uh, bless us um, by, through your spirit, to understand and comprehend what you teach us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Open your Bibles at the book of Philippians, the letter to the church in the, the Philippian church by the Apostle Paul. Um, and we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 4 and chapter uh, chapter 4 and verse, verse 6 um, and onwards to verse 9. So Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, whatever, is, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Thus far the reading of God's word. A number of years ago in a church that I attended, there was a, a lady that was sick. She had cancer, and so she was so sick that she wasn't able to attend church anymore. But she sent her sister to come to church just to bring um, her money for the offering bag. Now, she didn't have a lot of money, but she believed that if she doesn't give money to the church, that God will not make her well. And so in her mind, her payment was some kind of pain, pay, payment to manipulate God into healing her. And many people have similar mindsets or similar thoughts that they can twist God's arm to get what they want. Um, and they try and twist God through their works. Now, here's the reality is we cannot pay off God. God will do what God will do because God's will remains God's will. We cannot bribe him. Now, just to say, I'm not, I'm not gossiping about this lady because she wasn't from our church and, and nobody of you, none of you actually knows her. Secondly, she died many years ago on, of this cancer that she had. And what is more is I can't even remember her name. Um, and so I have no intention of, of gossiping about her. But I think there's a lesson for us to learn in this, and that is that we cannot bribe God. Whatever we do, we cannot bribe God. And of course, people use, use different means to try and bribe God. It's not just that they use money. Some people would say that if they just pray right, they try and twist God's arm by praying. If we just pray right, God will give us what we want. Other people will say to you, no, but it's only if you think right, then all your troubles will be over. But if you have a positive mindset, if you set your mind on positive things, then your circumstances will be good. Especially, they say, if you speak positive things, then those things will happen. And of course, the same thing as they say, that if you say negative things, then those things will happen as well. Others again say, no, it's about what you do. If you do the right things, if you do God's will, then God will give you your heart's desire. 
as if God is some genie in a bottle that we could just rub in the right way and he will give us what we want. Now in times of trial, like we have at the moment, people tend to fear. And we don't like to fear. In fact, as we heard last week, um, we, we as Christians should not fear. But how do we do that? How do we find God's peace if we are not able to twist God's mind into doing or giving to us what we want or changing our circumstances? Well, our passage leads us uh, from fear to peace. It teaches us how we can find God's peace in the midst of this corona crisis. And today, so today we'll be looking at our attitude, what our attitude should be in three different actions. The first action where we have to have a different attitude is prayer. And so our first point is peace through prayer. And we look at verse 6 and 7 for that. Now, many people believe that prayer is some kind of formula. And if you get the formula right, then you can have whatever you want. But as again, I say, we cannot twist the arm of God through prayer. Prayer rather turns our attitude to find rest in whatever God wants for us. And so maybe we should rather ask the question, what is God's purpose for this trial in our lives? What is it that God wants us to do at a time like this? And the answer is that God gives us these type of situations for the purpose that we should do the same that we do in every situation. God's intention of this virus, this trial that we are going through, is to grow our relationship with Him. We need to understand that God is truly in control. He is in control right now as well. We must understand our dependence upon God. We are dependent on Him now, but we were also dependent on Him before this crisis came. We must see that we have focused far too much on, on our circumstances and far too little about on, on God. God wants us to see that we have, we have started to gather treasures on this earth instead of gathering them in heaven. God wants us to see that we fall short of, of the glory, of glorifying God in all aspects of our lives. And that sin is a serious matter. I mean, just look around us and see the effects that sin has on this world. We should learn that we do not trust Him sufficiently in our circumstances when they are difficult. And so those are a few lessons that God might want to teach us during this time but there are many others, I'm sure, that you could add to that. But the purpose of this time is to bring us closer to the Lord, to build our relationship with Him. Now, one of the ways in which God wants us to build relationships with Him is through prayer. And Paul says, the only way for us not to be anxious about anything is to pray about everything. That's his point in verse 6 and 7. Listen to what he says. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ. And so if we want this peace from God, which surpasses all understanding, then we have to pray, and we have to pray with the right kind of attitude. Now, I want you to note that it does not say that if we pray to God, God is going to give us what we want. What, God, what Paul is saying is that when we pray to God, we will receive from God this peace we will guard, that will be guard, guarding our hearts and mind. The peace does not come from, from getting what we prayed for. The peace comes because we make our requests known to God. In other words, we find peace 
When we come to God in prayer, when we communicate with God, it is God who gives us this peace, not, not the things that we receive. True prayer, then, says Paul, consists of three attitudes, and, and he shows us these three attitudes in verse 6 by using three words. He says, prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. That's the way in which we make our requests known to God. And so we have to understand what he means with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. And so first, prayer. Well, with prayer, Paul means that we should bring our needs to God. In times of, of anguish, in times of trouble, we often find ourselves on the ash heap, isn't it? We stare our mis misery in the face. We, we consider our circumstances and we are troubled by them. Sometimes we, in times of, of trouble, we, we try and look, uh, we set our minds on, on, on thinking, what is the solution to these problems? Perhaps in the same time, we might be angry with God or, or disappointed that God is not giving us what we desire. And as a result, we don't pray. We don't come to God. But Paul says, no, we should pray. Tell God about your needs. Come to God and ask Him for help, and, and He will help us, and we will be joy, joyful about it, the Bible teaches us. So that's what he means with prayer. The, the second thing is we, it must be done with supplication. Now, what does that mean? It means that we should come fully, of, fully aware of our own unworthiness. We should not come to God with arrogance, thinking that we deserve God's grace, because we don't. Instead, we should come as undeserving slaves with a request for our master, a superior master. And so we come in honor and respect, aware of our own sinfulness and aware of God's holiness. So that's what it means to come with supplication. And then thirdly, it says it must also come with thanksgiving. Now, some people think that when it speaks about thanksgiving here is that we should thank God in advance. As we, as we pray about things that we, we want, we should thank God immediately and, and God will give us then the desires of our heart. As if we are somehow twisting God's arm in saying these things. As if we are actually forcing God to give us what we require or what we want. Well, if that's your understanding of thanksgiving, then you have a, a very skew understanding. You don't understand what thanks, thankfulness is all about. Now, thanks, thank, thanksgiving speaks of an attitude of our hearts as we come to God in prayer. It means that we are thankful for God's grace, which has kept us throughout all of our lives. It means to look back at our lives and see God's help a helping hand throughout all of our lives and being joyful because of that. It means to glorify God because of His faithfulness in our lives and to realize that whatever He is going to do for us now, it is for our best. It is to say to the Lord that, God, you have always looked after us. You have always been good to me. And I know that whatever you will do for me now is right. And if you come in prayer like this, if you come with this right attitude, then you will experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, Paul says. Not because you get what you want, but because you have found rest in God who cares for us. We find peace in God when we focus on Him. We do not find God's peace when we seek to get whatever we want. We find peace in God in the midst of whatever our circumstances might be, good or bad. It is not that we seek our circumstances to change so that we can find peace in that. No, we find peace in God in whatever our circumstances is. Just remember when Paul, uh, when Peter was was on the boat and, and he asked Jesus if he could come out on the water as Jesus was walking towards him. And, and as long as Peter focused on Jesus, he was fine. He was 
safe, he had peace. But the moment that he focused on his circumstances, his, pe his peace disappeared and he sunk. But then Jesus grabbed his hand, isn't it? As soon as Peter shouted out to the Lord, Lord help, then the Lord helped him to restore his peace. That's what Jesus did. And so here's the lesson. When we come to God in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, then we will find peace with God that surpasses all understanding. We find the peace in Him no matter what our circumstances may be. The second thing Paul says where we can find, what, the second action that we can do when we, we must have the right attitude so that we can find peace is thoughts. And so our second point is peace through thoughts. And we see in verse 8 regarding that. And so whatever our circumstances may be, we can have peace with God if we think right. And Paul gives us a list here of the things that we should think about. And it's not a complete list. That's why he ends it off by saying, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And so in other words, he's saying all of those things that are praiseworthy are the things that we should think about. Stop thinking about our circumstances. Stop thinking about everything that has gone wrong or that may just may still go wrong. Now think about God. Think about the things of God. Think of God's character. Remember who it is that our help comes from. It's not, uh, our help doesn't come from the changing of our circumstances. No, our help comes from the Lord who has made the heaven and the earth, who is faithful forever and just to all the works of his hands. Our hope is is in looking towards Jesus, who is the, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, as we lay aside every weight and everything that makes us stumble. Let's for a moment just think about the things that we have thought about, perhaps, in the last few weeks. How long is this virus still going to, af to afflict us? How long are we still going to have to stay at home? How long before we can meet together as a church? How long before our economy is fixed? How are we going to fix it? Maybe you think to yourself, what will happen if I get sick or, or somebody that I care about gets sick? Or even worse, what happens if I die or others that I know die? See, there's thousands of different things perhaps that's gone through your mind in the last few, um, few weeks but just like Peter, we have to be careful that we do not focus on our circumstances because then we will sink. Paul says, think about the things concerning God. That will give you peace. Stop focusing on whatever is wrong and what can go wrong and start focusing on God. That's what Paul says. And no, this is not the power of positive thinking as some people believe, because I'm not saying that the fact of you thinking of positive things is what gives you peace. No, it is when you focus on God in the midst of your difficult circumstances that you find peace, when you look towards God. If you place your circumstances in the, in the shadow and you bring God forward in your mind, that's when you find peace. And so it's not your thoughts that bring you peace, but the one of who you are thinking that brings you peace. God is faithful. He has always been faithful and he's going to continue to be faithful even through this time. God is almighty. And that means that he has the power to help us and to take us through this difficult time. God is sovereign, which means that God has sent this virus to teach us something, to help us to understand something. God is good, which means that God is unable, able, incapable of doing anything 
that is bad. God is faithful to his promises. And therefore, everything, including this virus, will work out for the good of those who trust in him. And so we find peace by thinking about the things of God when we stop focusing on our circumstances. And so while everything is falling around, uh, falling apart around us, we think of the one who is unchangeable, who is the constant, who is the same from eternity to eternity. We think of him who, who loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son. We think of him of whom we say that he is our hope in life and in death. We come to him and we think of him who will give us peace that surpasses all understanding. We think of him and the things concerning him. We think of his will. We think of his character. We think of his promises to us. We think of those things that are good, not those things which are falling apart and we have no control over. And if we think of him, It means that we have to do something. We can't just think of God in the air. We have to come to God's word. We have to spend time in God's word. We have to meditate on it day and night, as Psalm 1 says. Because if we truly want to understand who God is and what he has done for us, we must spend time in studying God's word. The third thing, the third action that Paul says that we should take to find peace is we should take action. We should do what God wants us to do. So we must, our third point is peace through our actions. We find that in verse 9. And so there's still another way in which we can experience the peace of God. It is when, in whatever our circumstances is, we Try and seek and do what God's will is. We see in verse 9 there the following words. He says, whatever you have learned, what you have learned and what you have received and what you have heard and what you have seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. And so here we find that word again, isn't it? We find the word peace. Do you want the God of peace to be with you? Do you want to be in his presence? Well, then you have to do his will, Paul says. What we have learned and what we have received and what we have heard and seen, those are the things that we should desire. Those are the things that we should do. And so that means that we should do what the Bible teaches us, isn't it? And if you're not sure what the Bible is teaching you, if you're not sure how to apply these things to your life, then look at the godly example of other believers. Paul says the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. He says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Now that doesn't mean that Paul is perfect or that we should follow Paul or anyone else in everything. Because every Christian, as we know, we are still sinners. And so at times we do things that are wrong. But it is in those things that we do right, as we follow Christ, those are the things that others should follow us in. Paul is saying, Christians meet together on a Sunday for a reason. We come together to learn from God's word, isn't it? We come there to hear God's word, to receive God's word. We come together also to encourage and to strengthen one another in the faith. And so we come together to see how it is that we should live this Christian life. How is it that we should spend our time in glorifying God? That's why we should spend more time in God's Word, isn't it? Here's the thing. If we have to do what we have learned and received and heard and seen, that requires us to learn and receive and hear and see these things. 
which means that we must come together as believers. We have to come to church. That's how we will know what God's will is. What Paul is saying is that we can't just say that we are a Christian. We, we have to live like a Christian. And how do we live as a Christian? Well, we have to learn that from God's word. We have to receive the message as it is preached. We have to hear what is said. And we should look at the lives of others. And so we have to attend church. Now, at the moment, we can't attend church. Am I right? We can't come together as a church. But, but the situation at the moment is unique. This is not normal. God's definition of what a church is, is not that we should sit at home, each on our couch, and, and watch a sermon on, online or, or, or on television. God's definition of church is not that we should each sit in our little corner, you in your little corner, and I in mine. No, God's definition of a church is when the believers meet together. And God says in his word in, in the book of Hebrews that we should not neglect the meeting together of the saints. And how easy it is for us to stay away from church. Sometimes we stay away for, without any reason or, or, or sometimes we just, we just feel tired or we just feel lazy or we're just too busy. Sometimes our circumstances have become more important to us than the Lord. Sometimes people and things have become more important to us than the Lord. Sometimes it's just that we just don't want to. We just don't want to come. I pray that this unique situation that we are finding ourselves in at the moment will encourage your mind and urge you to spend more time and to focus more on God and to spend more time at church, which is God's appointed way for us to be taught and, our, and God's appointed way for, in which we should encourage, be encouraged. Because if we want to be close to the Lord, we have to do His will. And to do His will, we have to learn, we have to receive, we have to hear, we have to see, and for that we need the community of believers. What must we learn from this passage? Well, the first thing I want us to consider is the fact that we, if we don't want to be anxious about anything, then we have to bring everything to God in prayer. Bring your needs to Him. He will listen. Tell Him your anxieties, and He will help you. Secondly, come in supplication which means do not come as if you as if you can demand god's gift as if you deserve it but come as a slave to a master a very good master indeed but still a master we should come like beggars isn't it because that's what we are remember the call of the the prayer of the the tax collector lord have mercy on me a sinner that's what we are Come to Him in thanksgiving, acknowledging that God has always cared for us and that we do not deserve it. Knowing that He is a good God and He will do good to us even now as we go through this difficult time. And so come in prayer, not because you want the things that you want, but come to prayer in prayer so that you can find peace in Him who knows what is best for you. Secondly, Think of the things of God and stop focusing on your circumstances. Think of what He has done for you. Think of who He is, His character. Think of His promises that He has made to His children, to us. And stop focusing on all the things that go wrong and the things that might still go wrong. When you're in a tunnel, and yes, we are in a tunnel at the moment, but don't turn out the light and make the tunnel even darker. Now focus on the light at the end, which is God. That's God willing to help and to save us as we go through this. God is not blind as if He doesn't know what we are going through. God is well aware of what we are going through. He has led us here. He will lead us through here. But He wants us to learn something from this. 
And if you want to find out what that is, you have to spend more time in God's Word, isn't it? Thirdly, and finally, don't just say that you are a Christian. Live like one. And for that you have to attend church regularly. That's where we learn. That's where we receive. That's where we hear how we should live. And yes, Christians are not perfect. I'm not even suggesting that they are. We all have faults. But stop focusing on people's faults. Stop focusing on people's faults. And rather start focusing on the things that they do right, where they are an example of those who follow Christ and follow their example. Don't let every, anything prevent you from meeting with the believers on a regular basis. And now while we are unable to do so, I want to encourage you to phone other believers, to speak to them about the Lord, not to speak about the coronavirus or the sports or whatever, about the weather. No, speak to other believers about the Lord. Send them messages. Encourage them to focus on the Lord and, and encourage them to stand, stand strong in the midst of this time of struggle. And if you yourself are starting to struggle, if, if you are anxious or uncertain at the moment, then I want you to contact other believers and, and to speak to them about that so that they can minister into your life, but also that they may pray for you. I want us to pray for one another. And pray for yourself. And spend time in reading the Bible, not, not only on your, on your own, but you have your family with you, most of you. Spend the time in Bible study with your family together. And that's how we will find God's peace in the midst of this coronavirus. If we pray and find God's peace as we pray to Him, as we think about God, we will find rest in His character and, and in His presence and in His promises. And if we do His will, Paul says that we will live in His presence then. And this is the way that we move from fear to peace. Amen.